In today's episode, I'll teach you guys how to replace reflections on sunglasses, but still let it look realistic. Okay, so over in Photoshop, in our right hand side, in our lace palette here, you guys get to see again the before and after. So here's obviously the before and after, before and after. So right away, we'll go and retouch the glasses. So again, this is a complete snippet here from our Foxy Hipster Pro tutorial, which is also brand new on the website. Again, first start will be over here, new layer icon. Sorry, and creating a new layer there. And I'm just going to rename this now to left side for the left side of the glasses here. You can obviously rename that to whatever you want. I'm going to zoom in a bit closer. Okay, so I have the glasses nice and big. I'm going to select the pen tool over here and start making an anchor point. So first anchor point, moving a bit over, second one. And I'll now continue to make a really nice round path just along the glasses, not so much the white frame here, just along the glasses. Obviously, I'll do this a bit quicker now for the tutorial, but do take more time when you do this. Okay, then let's also just move on here. We're almost done with our round path. Great, last few steps here and last anchor point is selected. Great, so now we have a nice path around the glasses. I'm gonna hit right click and say, first of all, make a selection. Now, the selection should be feather it uh, radius set zero, so it's nice and sharp. Great. Now I'm going to select M on the keyboard in order to get to the marking tool. I'm going to hit right click inside of the selection and say over here, save the selection. So now you can always come back again when you have saved the selection and just call it up really quickly. So we'll just save it as a new channel. I'm going to say here left three, I think. I'm going to hit OK. And right away, have a look here under my channels. Yes, left, then left two and left three. I've done this quite a few times already. So again, you guys get to see now here, we just have the one channel with left and again, our third channel. Great, so you've saved that. Then I'll basically now repeat the same process again on the right hand side. So I also have a selection saved here, which I've already done. So again, under channels, if we go to right, you'll see here we already have again a cutout with the pen tool, with the path, created a selection, zero feathering and save this as well. Great, let's go back to layers and we'll zoom out. Now for the next step again on the left side here, we're going to first of all choose our foreground colors because we want to fill this glass now. So again, head over to the foreground colors, select the foreground color, you'll directly go into the color picker. And now what I want to do is just select the color tone here from our original glass. So again, I'll go way up here to the brown area and you'll see also the, it's not really completely dark. It still has a bit of a brown touch in it. Okay, I'm going to say OK on that. Select the background color and we'll now pick a brown color from down here. Not so much from this white area because I want no white in there. I want more brown and a bit of the skin. Okay, and now right away we have our foreground color set. Now let's head over to the gradient tool. And again, in the gradient tool, we're going to select the first option, which is again, foreground to background color. Select that. And on our left side layer, let's just zoom out a little bit. G on the keyboard again. We're going to make a nice, okay, that didn't work because we forgot the selection. Great, let's move back to the marking tool. So you see, I also do mistakes in Photoshop. Hit right click, say load selection. And first of all, we have to select our channel now. So I'm going to select here left, right and we've selected, hit OK, and we have a selection, great. Now we're gonna head over to the gradient tool. I'll move over to the selection, hold Shift on the keyboard, and just make a small gradient like such, like so. So you still have a lot of blackness at the top, but also brown. Maybe do this one or two times until it looks a bit better and more realistic. Again, I'm gonna press now Command D, get out of the selection, and zoom out. So right away, this looks a bit real. It's a bit dark at the top and at the bottom, a bit lighter with the brown. But we still have all of these really weird lines in here, which we don't want. So what I'll do is go to filter, go to noise and say add noise to this. And around 0.5 to 1% 1, um, uh, 1 amount, I will add noise to this. Just hit OK. And right away, you'll see all these ugly lines disappear. So this looks a bit more real. Great, let's proceed with this process. Again, I'll create a new layer and just over here, right side. Okay, so write that down. And again, this time I'm not gonna forget it. Hit right click, load selection and load the right side. Okay, 
Great. Again, take the gradient tool. You still have the same selected. If you want to and do it more precise, you can also now select again the foreground colors from this area to this area. I'll actually go over here and just select the bottom part. Okay. And again, gradient tool. And I'll just make a nice selection over here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And you can also do, obviously, two selections at the same time and just do one gradient so it's really equal the gradient. Okay, but for me, I think I'm happy with that right now. Great, I'm gonna go back to filter and go back to noise, add noise, and again, 0.5%, adding that noise so all these ugly lines are out. Great, so that's basically it. Then again, taking both of these layers, press Command G, put that together in a group. I'm gonna rename this here to Glasses 2, okay? And we'll take and put a mask on this. So select the group, select the mask icon down here, and right away we have a mask on this. Now, on the mask, obviously, first of all, we need to switch our foreground colors back to the original state. So hit D on the keyboard, that will switch it back to black and white. And with X, you can switch to black and foreground colors, white in the back or in the front, and black in the front or the back. Okay, I want black as my foreground color currently. I'm gonna press B on the keyboard for the brush, hold Control all together, and move left and right in order to change the diameter. I'm also working with a Waco Continuous 5 Pro tablet, so I'm able to change my brush size here really quickly via the tablet. If you don't have that, take again Control and Alt, move left and right. So the hardness should be set to zero, so just move the mouse up and down. I'm gonna go to hardness zero and my diameter around 330, something around there. Great, but it should be super soft, so hardness down to zero. Maybe I'm actually going to make it a bit bigger. Now with like a 50% opacity from the brush, I'll just paint on the black area here at the top in order for us to just let the eyes shine through a little bit and to erase this area. But I want to keep, you guys can see the reflection down here, I want to keep this area for the reflection down. Okay, so I'll just brush a little bit over here. And a little bit more. Remember, it's just 50% opacity, so let's do it once more. And once more, just so that the eyes shine through a little bit. Now, I'll go and press 3 on the keyboard in order to go to a 30% opacity, but switch the foreground colors again to white, so we're hiding again. Now I'm just painting here at the bottom, just trying to subtly paint over the polyboard so you don't see the reflection. And maybe a little bit more. And do the same process over here with some huge brush strokes. Okay, and you can fiddle around with this for hours if you want. You can also try to work a bit with the opacity here under the layer. I like to do it right away just with my brush. Great, so I'll zoom out again. And right away this looks a bit more realistic to me. What I will also now do is as another last touch, create a new layer and just write here REF for reflection. And I'll go press M for the marking tool, hit right leg, load the selection again, and select now left three. Okay, so that is our selection again. I will now go and switch my foreground colors back to the original state, meaning press D and X, so we have white as the foreground color, and go back to the gradient tool. Now select the second option here, which is foreground color into transparent. And right away, I'll also just make here a small gradient going up. Again, holding shift on the keyboard. And I do this, like you guys can see, a few times until I'm happy, until I feel the gradient works. Great, I'll keep that. Press Command D, get out of the selection. And now what I'll do with this reflection, maybe let's write reflection on left. I will take the opacity all the way down just to 15%. Sometimes I also add another noise level on this. If it does look too intense, over here it looks quite a lot with lines, but over here it doesn't. Okay, so then I'll take it from 10% to 15% and just add another pop there, another reflection to this glass. Yeah, and that I would obviously then again create a new layer. We can just also write here again reflection on the right side. Just need to get my spelling there right. Reflection, marking tool, hit right leg. Load selection, again, select the right side, OK. G for the gradient tool on the new layer. And let's do this again, like so, a little bit more though. Yeah, let's try that for now. OK, and as well, 15%. Let's have a look here. 
We have to type that out properly. 15% might still be a little bit too much. The first was 10. So yeah, let's also go with 10% over here. Great, so now you also have again a reflection. I just created another group here. Let's also just retype that reflection. So this is optional, doesn't always need to be added. But yeah, if you want to have another pop on your glasses, you can also add that reflection there. Obviously, remember, you can still create another mask on this and also mask the reflection a little bit better. Okay, so that is basically it for removing the reflections here on the sunglasses. Remember again to create a new layer when working with the gradient tool. Also apply a bit of noise so you get rid of these ugly lines. And don't forget to use the mask in order to brush out a little bit so that the eyes just shine through the sunglasses a little bit more.